Hello and welcome to your sample webinar. Our learning objectives for today are to understand how to practice and navigate in Adobe Connect, which is your webinar. You will also learn how to actively participate using some different methods within your webinar, as well as become familiar with some of the expectations. At the end of this activity, you should be able to locate the webinar link, date, and time for each of your classes. You will be able to know how to log in to Adobe Connect using your first name and last initial, and use the different participation features such as chat, notepad, the mic, and attendee status icon. Finally, you will know how to finish the webinar. You will know where to post your discussion within Schoology in order to demonstrate that you have an understanding of the webinar. So let's go ahead and start. At the beginning of your webinar, your teacher will often put up a warm-up, either a problem or a prompt or something that you need to do. So as soon as you log in, you should start doing that. In this case, we have a poll. So our class took this poll, and this poll helps us to figure out where we came from maybe or where we're going. Notice that in this poll, 80% of the people have actually taken an online class. That's quite a lot of people. And at least 88% have conducted some online research. So we're familiar with the internet and navigating around. Only 8% have no experience with online learning. Let's look at our webinar expectations. All core course webinars have mandatory attendance. All of them. So you must come. If for some reason you are not able to come, say you are going to Pitkins, you must communicate this with your instructor in advance. And at the end of every webinar, you will be required to post a discussion in Schoology, as well as collaborate with your peers by responding to at least two other posts. That's really important. So remember that the webinar is not done just because your instructor ends it. You are required to go into Schoology at the end and submit that discussion. Make sure you come prepared to every webinar by bringing the necessary supplies and staying current with course material. If you don't stay current and you come to the webinar, you probably won't know what your instructor is talking about and that will slow down the webinar as well as impede your learning. Okay, let's look specifically at some of the success criteria. So where can you find the webinar day, time, and link? Well, let's go look. Okay, in each of your classes, if you'll notice down at the very bottom, when you scroll down on the far left side, you will see this information area right here, and I'm highlighting it in red. And in that information area, you will see your webinar day and time as well as the link. All you have to do is click on this link and that will take you to the webinar. Your teacher will also post their office link. If you need to meet with your teacher and you are not able to meet them in the lab, that's a good place to get a hold of them. Okay, let's look back at our webinar. So, now you know where the location of your webinar date and time is. Now, how do you log in? Well, as soon as you click on that webinar link, you'll be asked to either log in as a guest or log in and give your password as a member. You will all be guests. So log in with your first name and your last initial, like this, Susan E. Period. Okay, now let's look at some methods of active participation. One method is the chat feature over here. And you can see that people have tried this now. So all you have to do is click in the chat feature, type something, hit enter, and your name will come up with what you typed. Multiple people can type in there at the same time. Let's look at another method, attendee status. Sometimes your teacher will ask you to raise your hand if you agree or to use the agree status icon. Where is that? If you go to the top of the page, up here there's a man with his hand up. If you click on this down arrow, you can see all the different attendee statuses here. If I want to raise my hand, I would click on this top one and notice to the right of my name there's a man with a hand raised. You can also click on any of the other ones, like the laughter, and now I have laughter by my name. Finally, we have notepads and mics. Those are very important. Many of your teachers will require you to use those. 
and we'll try this soon. Finally, when we look at our expectations, we talked about posting in the discussion located in Schoology in the current week. We will do that at the end of this, but the page will be titled Webinar and Discussion. And you will need to make sure that you respond to two other people's posts in order to get full credit. Let's go ahead and move on. For this activity, you were to partner up with two or three other people sitting near you, and then to pick a notepad and type your team name across the top. So, what do the notepads look like? These are our notepads, and as you can see, groups got together and put a team name along the top, and then we had some questions you had to respond to down below. In order to type in the notepad, it's as simple as just clicking in there, say I click into notepad 2 here, and I can just start typing. So here I am at the end, and then I can type, type, and type, and type. I can even change the font size up here or the font color. So I can change it to dark blue and type some more. I can make my text be bold. I can include a bigger font. If I highlight, click on this, and scroll down, I can make the font bigger. And you can even delete. So let's look at what we responded to. Let's look at question one. Question one was, describe the proper format for logging into your webinar as a guest and give an example. Here is one from Notepad2 again. Your first name and last initial is how you log in. And here's some examples, Donovan A, Jasmine C, and Betty VB. Moving on to question two, where can you locate days, times, and the Adobe Connect link for each of your classes? Be specific. Over here in Notepad 6, they said you can find the link to your webinars in your courses on the lower left-hand corner. Very good. Let's go on to the next question. Question three, Describe using your microphone the expectations for participating or for participation in a webinar. And we had each group describe one expectation. In addition, one person from the group raise your hand on your attendee status to be called on to answer. Okay, how do we do that? Well, first, remember, up here in the top, we have the attendee status. So, in order to raise our hand, we would want to click on this guy up here and raise our hand. Now, in order to use the mic, that is this second box up here, right next to it, to the left, or sorry, two boxes to the left, and it looks like a mic, and that's right here. Notice that it's white, which means it's not turned on. In order to turn it on, I would need to click on this arrow. So when I click on this arrow, it says connect my mic. When you connect your mic, you'll probably get this pop-up. Make sure that you allow the mic to be connected. If you do not click on this, you're going to have problems with your mic. One thing you want to remember about your mic, and notice now that I have a line through it, and that's because when I come down here, I've muted my microphone. When you're not talking, you always want to leave your microphone in the mute status so there's not a lot of feedback in the webinar. So when you're ready to talk, unmute it by clicking on it, and then mute it when you're done talking. This brings us to our conclusion, our final question. We are now going to go individually into our IOL class, into Unit 3, that's what we're working on right now, into our discussion that says webinar and discussion, and we're going to post a response. Here we are in Schoology. Here's my webinar and discussion. All I have to do is click on this and it will give me directions as well as the prompt. There's a lot of posts, so notice it says, remember, in order to successfully complete this discussion, you must first post your own response and then read through the other posts and respond to at least two other people. Some examples of appropriate responses include 
I agree, agree with you because, or I don't understand how you got blank, as I interpreted this as blank. I like your response because, but just simply writing I agree or disagree or a nice response is not sufficient in order to demonstrate that you understand. Okay, let's look at our prompt. Respond to, describe two of the active participation features mentioned in the webinar, and then discuss your expectations for how you believe you will learn most effectively in a live webinar. Now when you first make your response, you won't be able to see other people's posts. They'll be grayed out. But once you make your initial response, you'll be able to read others, and you can see people have commented on other people's posts. Okay, that concludes our lesson on webinars. So at the end of this activity now, you do know how to locate where your webinar link is, your date and time, you know how to log in, and you know how to use the different features to chat and collaborate with your instructor and your peers, and finally, you know where to post your discussion at the end of the webinar.